This is the, we're gonna lower a 1965 Chevy C10 pickup because of instead of crawling underneath the back end to see what's horribly wrong with the suspension, I'm just gonna put a bunch of new stuff in and hope that it fixes the problem. Episode. Well, this is clearly another really bad idea, which is probably why I'm fairly excited to get it done. Plus, all of you are really bad influences, and you're like, yeah, Derek, blow your money on halfway decent garbage and put it into straight garbage. So I appreciate that a lot. We have a complete CPP kit, rear coils, front coils, shocks, and I have to be honest, I did not sleep last night after I did some maintenance on the old C10 discovered a wheel cylinder was shot and I realized that I can't do power brakes without front brakes. So now I'm in a position I have to replace that wheel cylinder. Let's start with the front because it's got a bunch of geometry going on up there and if I can still feel my hands we'll try to hit up the uh, rear end today. You know, if the guy can hang around till the end, I'm gonna give you a surprise and waste even more money and put some different wheels and tires on this truck. I like these a lot, but I've got a different pickup that I'd like to put them on, so. doing oh suspension uh, let's do that all right for ball joint castle nuts loose I got you can see there's a little gap in there and then I have about the same gap between my floor jack and the bottom and I'll take my Bruce Lee and get it in here and then uh, give her a couple Chuck Norris's what that gaps gonna do is when it slams down I know I've broken the connection here There you go. And uh, now we'll just apply some pressure with the jack and do that. Now we just bring it around down nice and easy. It's nice when the springs hit the old eject button like that for you. And you might notice here that all of the uh, brake line uh, we're stripped, and obviously I needed to get some length out of them to drop it down like this. So I did the right thing, and just snipped them off. And since I got to get back in here anyway, I'll just deal with that later. Well, clearly, um, this brake pad is just shot, and we can't leave it like that. So I'm gonna take some. Uh, brake pads in a can and uh, rejuvenate them a little bit and uh, I still feel like I can get some out of that. Oh, I got the driver's side all done so I'll get you in there and show you what that looks like. Shocks fit good, no complaints. Everything went together pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, factory wheel back on until we get all four corners done then I'll show you the wheels I got for it. Guy's gonna go ahead and dig right into the brake line situation on this side since I had such an issue on the other side. And if that goes well, maybe sort of kind of this will happen a little bit more better. I've been soaking the living piss out of this with the WD-40, so hopefully uh, that'll help a little bit. Let's 
see. Yes. Now we're in business. So, brake line broke loose. Hopefully the rest of this will go uh, relatively smooth, at least compared to the other side. My goodness. On this side, I'll give you a little in-depth view of my front-end rebuild process, the Deluxe Edition. Uh, if you've seen the 70 Chevelle lowering video, you've probably already seen it, but for those of you that haven't, I'll show you how to rebuild everything in about a minute and 50 seconds. If it ain't one thing fighting a guy, it's another. Nice and easy. Step one of the front end rebuild process is get yourself a drill and one of these wire wheels here. And you want one nice and flexible and heavily used and you could tell that by when these fling off and stick into your cheeks. And we're going to blow off as much of this grime and dirt and grease as possible. And you know you're doing a good job and most of it ends up in your mouth. Once you get it relatively clean, then you take your front end rejuvenation spray and you just uh, get this in here. Apply it pretty heavy, and this will rejuvenate all these bushings up here and self heal a lot of this. And uh, whatever you don't want to look at or needs fix, it'll just cover it up a little bit, you know. Even though they send you new hardware with these shocks and stuff, you want to go ahead and just use all the old stuff because you know she fits in there. Okay. We're ready for coil spring dance number two. All right, both sides are done, so I'm gonna throw this tire on quick, then we'll drop the front end down and see what we've got for a drop. And then I think, hopefully, hard part's done. Then we can finally move on to the rear and See what's going on with that and why I started this whole process. All right, let's see what it looks like here. I think that looks pretty good. Definitely a noticeable difference uh, between the other ones. In fact, it's actually sitting pretty perfect right now. I don't even know if I should mess with the rear. Alright, we're on to the rear of the truck. Um, you might not be able to see, but this side's definitely got a kink in its step. I'm really hoping that the frame isn't bent or worse rotted because I live in the most godforsaken state in America and everything is rusty and rotten and bent and ruined. Anyway, I'll get her jacked up and slide out on her ether and uh, see what we got going on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. Found the problem. And I have never in my life seen this before. Uh, kind of impressed actually. Quick professional diagnosis here. Some Ting Wong. Um, yeah, there's usually uh, something here, and it appears to have been zing zanged, and the whole rear has been riding on the uh, overload spring, which explains everything fairly quickly. Uh, but I don't care, it's got a 12 bolt. Really concentrate. This concrete feels like it's 90 degrees. Ah. 
maybe. I don't even know anymore. Ow! Ah. Easy. Yep, she snapped off. Well, right when I snapped those coil spring retainer clamps off, I knew I was in trouble. So I started calling around and yeah, no one's gonna have those in stock, so. I've already got a mortar from Speedway Motors and I'm going to get a hub assembly and brake drum as well so I can fix the brakes and hopefully in a couple days I'll come back I'll have enough parts to get the rear end done and maybe even fix the brakes and then we'll put the wheels on it and maybe go take this puppy for a spin but also supposed to get 8 to 12 inches of snow in the next couple days thanks Minnesota awesome so see you in a couple days oh hey I'm back uh, a couple days later, I'm not even sure what day it is, but anyway, important thing is, part showed up to shut us down, which is these coil spring clamps. Really easy how these work. One goes on the top like this, one goes on the bottom like that, bolts it to the trailing arm, bolts it to the frame. That keeps this bad boy from zipping out on a guy. So if all goes well, we should not have very much left. As uh, long as the old hardware doesn't fight me. Bolts in this thing look like railroad ties are so rotted. So I'm sure everything is going to continue to break off, which is fine, it's faster. So I'm going to go uh, pop these in, throw the coil springs in, and throw the shocks in, and we're all set. Well, a guy went ahead and looked at this for about four seconds, and I'm trying to remember the last one I did. Of course, I know I did it the easiest way, so I'm going to snip on the old bottom one and then. Just jack it up, keep it loose, jack it up, and then once this gets fairly lined up, I'll put on the top one. This Harvard Freight Jack is excellent. This is really easy when you can't feel your fingers. How come every time I slide under here, I forget what I came under here with? This rust down here is really good in the mouth. I'm not the way wrong angle here but you guys got to see what's going on right ah. Ah, get my face right down ah. you just got to keep your eyes open when you know the dust is and dirt's coming well i think we got one side done so we'll snag on over to the other side apparently Guy's supposed to use these little disc things and uh, does stuff. Let me get my persuader. Ow! Make sure you don't use a punch, just uh, ruin the threads on your bolt. Oh no, my back's starting to cramp. Oh, you gotta hurry, Derek. Oh no. Oh no. I'm down. Oh. Everything's fine. Just have to take a little stretch in a bend. Well, that was unnecessary and inconvenient. But we're in the home stretch now, so. Miles will just power through it. But, uh, I don't know. Well, the rear's put all back together, and honestly, it's not that bad. Only takes one or four tools. If you're at home thinking about doing it, do it. Get it done. It's not that bad at all. Um, it's really late, but let's at least get the tires on this thing, lower it down, see what the stance is like. If I can keep the overload springs on it, I'd really, really like to. Because I'm going to beat the out of this truck. And it's pretty much going to have my car trailer hooked to it permanently, so I'd like to have a little bit more of it. Yeah! Oh yeah, another thing, sorry to disappoint you, but we are definitely not going to put different tires and wheels on this because there's at least 914 feet of snow outside and uh, Project Black Velvet is just buried and I'm not digging snow like that, so plus these uh, Firestone Winter Forces I'm actually kind of digging on these things, so we're going to leave these on here for now
Well, we're up here on the old front end again. We're going to go ahead and snip this here hub and drum off. Separate the old drum from the hub. Replace the hub. Check out the old bearings and spit on them. Try to replace the wheel cylinder wherever I laid that thing. Completely do nothing with the brake line that I cut. And put it all back together. Yep. You just gotta make sure you have the best dang tool ever made when you work on them and you guys will be all right. Just like that, and this one's a little trickier. I'm probably gonna blow the camera over. Just like that, and then you just ease on it. You just gotta ease. There you go. You got these retainer springs down here. That'll hold everything into place, fellas. You just kind of get them out like that. Yeah, she had, ooh, yeah. Yeah, she had some issues. Yeah, then a feller just does the old reverse. Well, now we just gotta teach this drum how to live. Gonna need a death wheel, some horsepower, and spectacles. Three little on here, you gotta get out of there. guys are gonna go ahead and just pretend that I didn't just look for this for 25 minutes even though I special ordered it. Drove 30 minutes to get it. I don't know what the shiny stuff means. We're gonna run on it. Zig zang! You know I do uh, a lot of wheel bearings it seems like for some reason but I only have like 5.6% of my tools and stuff in the shop right now. So I don't have the old snot to this up. So we're just gonna pretend um, that uh, I put a lot of uh, grease in here and repack the bearing. But we're just gonna ease her back on here. Well, it ended up right where I wanted it actually. It has just a tiny bit of rake on it, but not a lot. It's got a nice looking stance, and I can still use the uh, overload springs, which is nice. Well, that does it for this episode. Really like the way it turned out. I'm so excited to go drive this thing. It's actually gonna be my daily driver this spring, and I'm gonna be hauling a lot of junk at the car trailer with this. Thanks so much for watching. Your guys' support's been overwhelming. I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you comment, like the video, I almost reply to every single comment on there. I really like your guys' comments, feedback, input. Um, I appreciate it a lot. Also, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button down there for me and ring the little bell thing. See you guys next time.